Welcome to the Vices in Parallel 30 Minutes to Kill podcast. You are listening to the Vices and Teramo Show, 30 Minutes to Kill, More or Less, a horror entertainment podcast featuring horror, suspense, and psychological thrillers. You can find us on iTunes, Stitchers, and Podomatic, just about anywhere. Type in V-I-C-I-S-I-N-T-E-R-I-M-O. I am your host, Michael Matt Saxon jones here with my lovely wife and co-host, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi. We generally have four segments to each show, a late to rest where we recap anything from old shows or anything that we may have missed. We have a featured movie review. This time, it comes at night. Uh, we then have Garbage In, Garbage Out, where we talk about any TV, movies, or books that we may have caught over the last week or so, and end with a crawling chaos. This time, I think it comes to us by way of the Dark Discussion podcast there, Philip. I think. It's just a link that I'll share, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyhow, it's always a topic or factoid that we've never talked about before on the show, sometimes silly, Sometimes serious, most always chaotic. Portions of this podcast are made possible through the patronage of great people like At Lonely Bob, Big Alby, and Goldafish. Since we are trying to grow our podcast in every way possible even if you can't be a patron, you can still help us grow by liking, commenting, and subscribing to the podcast. Also you can show your support by proudly placing our Vices Interimo sticker where everyone can see it. Send me your address in a private message and I will mail you your very own sticker anywhere in the world free of charge. My email is madsaxon, with two x's at yahoo.com. That's m-a-d-s-a-x-x-o-n at yahoo.com. Thanks for your support. It means a lot. I'd ask how you're doing, but I already know how you're doing, so we'll just skip that and go right into the laid to rest section. Well, you don't want to talk about how you're feeling, do you? It's a segment, not a section. Oh my gosh, here we go again. Al, set her straight for me. I'll set you straight. All right. You don't usually ask me how I'm doing. I might need to stand up for a minute, though. I'm sorry. I mean, hold that thought. Ready? All right. So for laid to rest, I uh, was asking, I'm asking, <laughs> do you? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Anyhow, um, so I was asking if you had anything to tie up from last episode. Last episode being... All Hallows Eve. Yes, that we recorded while we were on vacation of right. sorts. Right. More of a long weekend than anything else, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Wow, it's all a fuzzy blur now. It, is it now? Yeah. I couldn't remember what movie we talked about. Okay, well what I was gonna uh, say yes. was that uh you know, Halloween doesn't have to end, at least not for our patrons anyhow. Uh I put up a video for them to enjoy our haunted train ride. Oh boy. I'm sure they're gonna enjoy it. No, I'm not <laughs> But oh. uh, anyhow, okay. Anyhow, what what did you have on a more serious um, note? Um, I guess I guess I don't have anything to add or amend. Okay. Um, I think I still like it just as well as I did. Okay, and I, I thought you had found some notes or whatever, but there was some confusion with what was written no. out, and so well, we'll move on then at this point. I couldn't find my notes for this week's movie. And I had to go dig through the recycle bin, <laughs> which was a thrill and a half. But I found them all crumpled up with a big bite taken out of them. I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know. It At got torn. At any rate, let's maybe just get into the movie then, because nobody cares about this stuff. I guess not. All right. Uh...
I just want to talk. And I want honest answers. Do you have any idea what's going on out there? I'm going to try and help you and your family. I want to thank you again for letting us stay here. Just going to run through a few things. When we go out during the day, we like to stick to groups just for safety. The red door. It's the only way in and out of the house. It stays closed and locked all the time. <laughs> I have the keys. It's the only set. <laughs> Most important thing. What's he see? It's okay. Just go inside. We never go out at night. The door was already open when you got there. Yeah. Then who opened it? Put your mask on. Nobody's sick here. Can't trust anyone but family. You don't get it. How old are you, Travis? If they're sick, then I am too. If you're lying to me, I will kill you. Have you read the synopsis? Okay, well, It Comes at Night is actually a movie that came out this year, according to Netflix. Yeah. Uh, it's 2017, and it's rated R. Mm-hmm. Um, it's rated R. It's a pretty soft R, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Though, but, uh, eh, arguably, there's violence, but... I guess. Yeah. I don't think it's any... Well, I was going to say, I don't think it's any worse than what you would see on A Walking Dead, but... We'll get it to that. It wasn't any worse than that. Yeah. I mean, okay. nothing was that bad, but okay, here we go. With a malevolent force terrorizing the world outside his isolated house, a young father must decide how far he's willing to go to protect his wife and son when another family shows up looking for refuge. Okay, I'm going to start with this and say it had been a challenging week at work. Nobody cares about that, but I come home. I figure, you know what? We need to do a movie for the podcast. Let's sit down and watch a horror movie. We're going to throw on It Comes at Night, and I'm just going to sit back and relax and lose myself Uh. in, I don't know, maybe some supernatural horror, maybe some hack and slash, some some gore, some TNA. And uh, no, absolutely not. This movie is the exact opposite of relaxing, in fact. Okay. I think I liked it better than you did from a couple of things you said just a few minutes ago when we were watching the trailer, but not necessarily. Anyhow. That's weird. I don't think I said anything that... You said a a couple of things that that I disagree with you strongly on, but... I didn't have any criticisms, though. Not criticisms per se, but there were still some... eh, Whatever, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. My point with this is... Because I liked it a lot. Okay. I liked it even more than that. Okay. Okay. It. How do you know? Are you in my just, brain? Yes, I am. All right. All right. So anyhow, it took. Well, I'd like in there mentioned uh, a day in the Walking Dead. It was one of my first notes here is, um, this takes everything in you would see in the Walking Dead and ratchets up about to eleven and makes it even more realistic. Okay. In my opinion, the way it deals with fear and panic and the unknown and so on. Walking Dead, you know you've got zombies coming at you. You kind of know, despite not knowing why, you, you know what the threat is and so on. This takes fear and paranoia and the, well, I was going to arguably say the reality 
of protecting yourself or your loved ones to like a whole different level. And other people would argue this is not a horror movie. Right. Anyhow, go ahead and say what you had to say about it, if anything, uh, specifically. I I made a note also about The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and my note was that this was a Walking Dead scenario, and we've seen it many, many times before. Um, anytime you meet new people in a situation like this, mm-hmm. you know, are they a friend or a foe? Can I trust them? Are they going to be helpful? Are they going to shank me in my sleep? Who do you let in? Who do you not let in? What have I learned from Walking Dead? You don't trust anybody. Okay, I'm sorry, Rick. You have to trust. <laughs> you know, there was just, there was very much that ang- that same anxiety that you get on Walking Dead. Yeah, well. That's like I what said, this movie was all about. To me, it was even beyond that. Um yeah, that's interesting because boy, there's been some stressful things in Walking Dead. Yeah, I this movie well, this... really got to me for a number of reasons. I think okay. also because I didn't know what to expect with it. Well, and do you want to? You want to? Before we continue, don't forget what you're saying. All right. Um, let's start by saying because we've already kind of said what the movie is about. That's what it's about. Um, it was. I, some people who we know went and saw this because they saw the trailer. Well, I was going to say it was your sister-in-law and her daughter. My sister-in-law, not your <laughs> sister-in-law. Sorry. Anyhow. I wasn't going to name names. Okay. Um, she was someone's sister-in-law. I don't know. Um, but, yes, some family members saw the trailer and thought, it. you know, they were like, oh, let's go see this scary horror movie. But the trailer was... Not at all a representation of what the movie was. So uh, we just heard on another video that I think a lot of people were very disappointed with the movie. Okay. Because it's not what they were looking for. Right. Right. Um, I don't know how much we want. We don't want to do spoilers. No. But I. W- I but what, we do have to I, say. I, I would initially say, what can we spoil about well, this beyond? Do you want to take this? This uh, is really like this whole thing is sliding onto the ground. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess the spoiler is. It's not a horror movie in that sense. <laughs> You're not going to see what comes at night. You're not. You might. Well, you may. <laughs> you might not. You, you may choose to. Um, you may choose to figure out whether you've seen it or not. Well, so we watched the commentary afterwards. We watched what the director uh, writer had to say about it, and that he things were deliberately left ambiguous, right? And in the hopes that you would get more out of it on multiple viewings, right? I'm not sure well, if I would go for multiple viewings of this, mm. but for me, it worked as a horror movie because it was very upsetting to me. Yeah. Well, it's he, um, the writer director, he said it was about human nature mm-hmm. and dynamics, you know, right. relationships. Right. That's what it's about. Yeah. You're not going to see monsters. You're not going to see. Um, you know, infected people going nuts. You're not going to see all of that. It's about family. It's about getting along um, in a stressful situation where your future is kind of uncertain. Uncertain at best. Yep. Um, yeah. I one of my notes here says living off the grid for even twelve hours sucks. Yeah. And living off the grid, uh, it's kind of a joke in the fact that we just we lost electricity recently. Oh. For, for 12 hours, we didn't have electricity, and that was really inconvenient. So, I mean, we take a lot of things for, for granted. Wow, but that makes us sound like wusses. I, I didn't say I wasn't going to live through it, but you know what I mean? Oh, okay. It just it sucked and it was inconvenient. So, imagining a world where you had to provide for yourself... Most people couldn't do it. Right. The The population, I mean, if a really bad disaster hit, it's not the the disaster necessarily that's going to take people out. It's everything else with them not being able to cope with the aftermath yeah. of it. Well, they were definitely in the right place because they were out in the country. Right. And when you and I lived out in the country, I was confident that we would be fine 